what's going on there guys we back with another one and today we got to talk about all the things that Scottie Pippen has said and some of the inconsistencies in his take regarding Michael Jordan and LeBron James he spoke on it several times and it has switched several times which led many to speculate it depends on how he feels about Michael Jordan that day what his take is going to be um, now everybody's entitled to their opinion especially Scottie Pippen you know he knows Michael Jordan better than any of us and he helped popularize the position that LeBron James plays the point forward you know um you don't typically have like a traditional point guard when you play the point forward you assume the point duties but you are still responsible for defending you know one through I guess in Scotty's day it was more so one through three and sometimes four because you remember he got those blocks on Charles Smith. He was defending different positions based on the matchups. But a point forward back in the day couldn't defend one through five because the fives was just too big. So when they say people defend one through five today, it's not the same game. So it's not. So I would say even back then, LeBron would have defended one through four, but he wouldn't have defended the fives. But I say all that to say, I'm going to show you the inconsistencies in his take, and I'll be back with my commentary. Check it out. I you mean, try to make I'm, the best of it. I'm trying to make the best of it, but really, the comparison shouldn't ever be made. They're, they both play two different positions. The way LeBron James play, Michael Jordan was never asked to play that way because I took that away from him. I was the point forward. I was the facilitator. Michael Jordan is a scorer. He was a defender. He played the game as complete as LeBron James did when he needed to. But he was asked to score the basketball, and that's what he was great at. And there's no game that I would ever play in and pick LeBron James over Michael Jordan. No game. No game. So now you're just being Not if firm I'm trying to it. win. Not if I'm trying to win. LeBron will be the greatest statistical guy to ever play the game of basketball. And there's no comparison to him. None. So does that make him the greatest player to ever play the game? I'll leave that out for debating because I don't believe that there's a great player because our game is a team game and one player can't do it. Like, I seen Michael Jordan play before I came to play with the Bulls. You guys seen him play. He was a horrible player. He was horrible to play with. He was all one-on-one. -on -one. He's shooting bad shots. And all of a sudden, we become a team and we start winning. Everybody forgot who he was. So when you analyze Scottie Pippen's take, some of the points he's trying to make are valid because I could read through what he's trying to say, right? But but he also said Jordan could play that way when he needed to. And I'm going to put these stats up on the screen. During an 11-game stretch where they had Jordan playing point guard, he averaged a triple-double. He still got his points, rebounds, assists, but it wasn't like today's game where they're shooting so many threes. Guys are getting out the way so you could get rebounds. And, um, you know, you weren't just kicking the shooters. He had to really penetrate and find bigs for dunks and stuff like that back then. So I ain't wanting to say it's a real triple-double. That'll sound like hate. But it was a more impressive triple-double in my book you know, that he was averaging at that time. But, Scotty, you were brought in to play that role. It's not that you took it from him. You had to mature into that role and reach the level with MJ because there's a myth from people that were too young to watch the Bulls at the time that Scotty just came in averaging 20 a game and helping Jordan like that and doing everything else. And that was not the truth. You know, Scotty had to get stronger, and it took Scotty some years. MJ came in the league, hit the hit the ground running. Um, and there's no slight to Scotty Pippen at all. It's just the fact of the matter that he wasn't this star player when he came into the league. Go back and check. And since people love stats so much, go check the stats, and you'll see Scotty Pippen had to grow into that role. Now, um, he was always a lengthy defender when he got in the league, but as far as 
the star Scottie Pippen, multiple time All Star, he didn't come in that way. Like MJ came straight in as a dog, you know, instantly, arguably the best two guard in the league. MJ was who he was from day one. Scotty, it took a little time. You know, they created the Breakfast Club. Those guys were hungry, and you know, it led to six championships. But you, we we could see, like he said, you know, he would never take LeBron over MJ if he's trying to win, which that puts MJ as the best player of all time. And now recently, after all these reports come out, his son dating, I mean, Jordan's son dating his ex-wife, you know, all the back and forth they've had, Pippen's book, Last Dance, all these things have noticeably created a rift and Scotty is saying now that there's no comparison to LeBron. Let's say this. He said Jordan is a horrible or was a horrible basketball player before his arrival. And then when he arrived, they started winning. What he's alluding to is he played point forward, but the delivery is not good because he said Michael Jordan was a horrible player. You've even heard people say Michael Jordan is a selfish player. All selfish players aren't horrible players. They just have to play the game in a different way. And Jordan did. You know, he started trusting his teammates more. So you could say he was a bit on the selfish side. But, you know, he said Jordan was a defender and all that at first. And now it's like, you know, he's diminishing Mike's legacy. But... You can't really do that without affecting your own legacy because you guys, especially on the court, you guys are tied together for life, you know, whether you like it or not. I know some of this stuff is hard, you know, with his son and I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know what MJ has done to him behind the scenes or vice versa, but I know it's it's hard, but you guys are just going to be looped in forever, man. And, and this is a sad look. Uh, just on, I ain't really going to say on both sides because MJ don't really say nothing about it. Now, your portrayal in Last Dance, I could see why that annoys you some. Just due to the fact that when he was talking about you not going back in the game or when the documentary talked about you not going back in the game, that was some of the time Jordan was retired. So it feels like, man, you wasn't even there. So it's, and I know you okayed everything for this documentary. This is all you got was secondhand because you wasn't there. You were retired playing baseball somewhere. So that really seems like the issue that these two men have. Um, I've always loved Scottie Pippen as a player. Michael Jordan was my favorite player coming up. These guys, I remember um, when they were playing the Lakers, Jordan couldn't stop Magic. They put Scottie on him, who had a little more length and size, and he was more disruptive on Magic Johnson. I remember different things. Like, these guys... um, so, yeah, Scotty, Scotty was important, man. Nobody ain't saying that. And Scotty is right. It is a team game. Now, he when he says he don't believe there's no greatest, it, it's hard to speak to a greatest because of errors. You can only thrive in the conditions that you're playing in. So, And you can only judge a player by that, by how the way the world is. And... It's not really ducking or trying not to choose or trying to be politically correct. i give you an example. Like, if LeBron would have came up in, like, the late 70s, 80s, right, he would have been at North Carolina or somewhere with Michael Jordan. You see what I'm saying? So LeBron doesn't even go right out of high school to the NBA. He goes... And he plays in college for about three years with other great players. You know, it'd be Jordan, like it'd be Jordan Worthy and LeBron at Carolina, you know, playing together. Or he's at Maryland with Lynn Bias or something like that. These guys didn't go straight to the league. They went and they were coached under 
great coaches and by the time they got to the nba so this would actually go with the thing kwame's talking about like lebron will have like a go-to move it, it'll be lebron but it'll be a much more dangerous version of lebron you know what i'm saying he'd be a better free throw shooter he would have played out the post more earlier in his career and he'd be comfortable doing it Th- that version of lebron like if he would have if that talent would have came along in the 70s or 80s and the player he would have became now it might you know he he might have been really like that you know what i'm saying to the point where it might not be no comparison for real but just based on what we see and some of the things lebron never developed in his prime um he's so great he still is the all-time statistical leader and he has like you know he takes care of his body to the level where he's able to play this amount of time but jordan had a strong fundamental base as far as getting his shots off and kobe learned it from mj and um very competitive defenders that competitive edge they had and all of that it, it is a separator, you know, when it's winning time sometimes. I know some people's argument is Jordan didn't only play six years, so what happened to other years when he didn't win those rings? Difference is when Jordan got a championship team and he got a taste of one, he three-peated, retired, which we can't hold that against LeBron, you know, that Jordan retired. That's impressive that LeBron has continued to play every season. So that's a point for LeBron because, you know, you can't just say he retired. He would have won if he would have beat uh, Hakeem's teams if he was there. He, the fact of the matter is he wasn't there. So um, he came back in 95, March, though. It, like, it was late in the season. It wasn't in NBA season shape. You know, they lose to the Orlando Magic. We know how that goes. And Hakeem and them sweep the Magic in the finals. So when he comes back next year and he has a full training camp and an offseason, they three-peat again. And he retires again. And then, you know, the Wizards portion of his career happens. So what we say saying, we talk about Jordan's greatness uh, as far as the six rings is... Pretty much when he had a full season for the rest of his career after winning his first one, he won the title every year until those Wizards years. When he had a full training camp and a full season. That's all we saying. So that's why he seemed so unbeatable. If you lived in that time, think about it. Uh, 1991, 91, 92, 92, 93 retire returns um, late 95 season loses to the magic then you know 95 96 96 97 97 98 then retires comes back at 40 you know what I'm saying so that's why we look at MJ the way we do he won once he got to that mountaintop, it won't no knocking him off. And there were great teams, regardless of what people saying. The plumbers and all that, that's good meme material on social media. But those teams were absolutely legit. So you can't diminish his competition at all. Um, Man, I could go on and on and ramble, but I really want to hear y'all thoughts about it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.